Did you know? Despite continuous efforts by the United States to restrict semiconductor foundries like TSMC and Samsung from providing chip manufacturing services to Huawei through rule modifications, and ongoing lobbying to persuade allies to join in boycotting communication equipment from Chinese companies like Huawei and ZTE, there remains significant controversy in the international market regarding whether to collaborate with Huawei on 5G technology. However, on August 25, there was a new development in Huawei's 5G saga. Huawei and Swedish telecommunications giant Ericsson signed a long-term global cross-license agreement. This agreement encompasses 3 divided by 4 divided by 5G cellular technology, and covers essential patents related to widely recognized standards such as 3GPP, ITU, IEEE, IETF, as well as communication network infrastructure and terminal device sales. As of now, Huawei has accumulated nearly 200 bilateral licensing agreements. As per the agreement's terms, both parties mutually permit each other to utilize their respective standard patent technologies on a global scale. This implies that Huawei's 5G patent technologies can potentially be marketed in developed countries like Europe and the United States through Ericsson's devices. Do you know a dramatic scene happening in Ethiopia? On May 9, 2022, Ethio Telecom announced that it will start the pre-commercial service test of 5G network. At first, 5G network service will be launched in six areas of the capital, and the coverage will be gradually expanded in the future. The equipment supplier for this 5G service is Huawei. I believe everyone knows that the US has been spreading rumors about the security of Huawei's 5G equipment, and has been lobbying other countries not to use Huawei's equipment. Obviously, Ethiopia didn't do that. Although Huawei has been an old player in Ethiopia's telecom market for more than 20 years, the process of participating in Ethiopia's 5G construction this time has not been that smooth. So why did Ethiopia choose Huawei? With Huawei's help, will Africa achieve a breakthrough in 5G construction? At the same time, is the United States, which has completely broken with Huawei, really getting better after leaving Huawei? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Teller. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's move on to today's topic. In order for some countries to give up Huawei equipment and choose Ericsson, Nokia, and other Western suppliers to cooperate, the United States has promised to provide certain funding including providing billions of dollars in funding to Brazil to buy Ericsson, Nokia equipment, on the condition of giving up Huawei equipment. However, Huawei finally got 5G orders from Brazil and also helped Brazil build a 5G smart factory. The same scene is repeated in Africa, where the United States intends to fund Ethiopia to give up Huawei. However, Safaricom, a local operator in Ethiopia, still chose Huawei as a partner, allowing Huawei to participate in the supply of 5G network service equipment. In fact, before winning this order, Huawei's 5G was not taken seriously in the country and was even excluded by Western Capital for a time. Huawei didn't win until Safaricom started testing 5G networks before they were commercially available. What happened in during this period? Why did Africa chose Huawei? In fact, the capital background behind Safaricom is complicated, including British Vodafone Corporation, Japan's Sumitomo Corporation and the United States International Development Finance Corporation. DFC is directly funded by the United States to provide funds to replace Chinese equipment in foreign telecommunications infrastructure, so that the operators of the countries that are funded have to give up the equipment of Chinese enterprises. So the emergence of DFC also makes things more complicated. Originally according to the plan, DFC will provide Safaricom with billions of dollars in funding, mainly to let Safaricom choose Ericsson and Nokia for cooperation. However, due to various factors, DFC was unable to provide funding smoothly, but Safaricom's 5G construction in Ethiopia cannot wait for funding forever. After more than a year, when Safaricom launched the 5G construction project and Huawei appeared in the cooperation list. Safaricom, which was supposed to be funded by the United States, went around in circles and finally chose to go with Huawei. Facts have proved that as long as there are no interference factors such as the United States, operators in various countries know how to choose. Therefore, although the United States hopes to use financial tools to stop Huawei, reality tells the United States that the funds needed to achieve these goals are not sustainable. Therefore, 
Huawei's dramatic acquisition of a large order of about 52 billion yuan this time shows that the hegemony of American companies has begun to decline, because the cost of sanctions and blocking Huawei cannot be borne by anyone. So, with the help of Huawei, will there be a breakthrough in 5G construction in Africa? The impression given to the African region seems to be somewhat deviated from the long-term prospects of 5G. In this land, it is difficult for us to imagine what kind of 5G market will be formed, and whether it is worthwhile to vigorously develop the layout. In fact, such stereotypes should have been changed a long time ago. As an international giant, Huawei naturally has foresight in its layout. Since it has decided to deploy in the African market, then Africa will absolutely have its unique market advantages. In general, this may also depend on the degree of development of the 5G market in Africa and various countries, as well as the ability to choose 5G network construction independently. Just like Brazil, Turkey, Russia, Bangladesh, Zambia, and other countries, on the premise of being able to make their own choices, they insist on choosing the best manufacturers for cooperation without external interference. Only in this way can they truly usher in a turning point for 5G. As the lies concocted by the United States continue to be exposed, it is believed that more and more countries will become more independent in 5G construction. So, is the United States, which has completely broken with Huawei, really getting better after leaving Huawei? Okay, things are getting more and more interesting. Well, delays, and severe funding shortfalls have reportedly largely missed the mark, and Chinese tech still exists across the US, even in some surprising places. In fact, the forced removal of billions of dollars worth of Chinese equipment from US telecommunications networks, also poses a public safety risk in the United States. After all, without adequate funding for a federal aid program called, Remove and Replace, Local carriers would have to cut service to rural America and reduce or even completely stop 911 calls along busy highways. Last year, Congress allocated $1.9 billion to the Federal Communications Commission's Tear Down and Replace program, which focuses on getting telecom providers in rural America to replace their Chinese network equipment with products from Western manufacturers. However, when the agency tallied the funding requests of 181 applicants in January, it found a total of $5.6 billion, nearly three times the amount available. There's no sign Congress will address the funding shortfall anytime soon, so telecom executives are frustrated. For example, United Wireless Corporation, which serves 17 counties in southwestern Kansas, said it would have to cut service if they couldn't get the funding they asked for. What's worse, if subsidies are reduced too much, companies may have to go bankrupt. Time is running out for telecom companies in rural America the FCC will require the replacement to be completed within one year of releasing the funds. In addition, ZTE has stopped supporting US customers, and Huawei will soon follow. For some US telecommunications suppliers who previously bought equipment such as Huawei and ZTE, the situation will become very bad if the old equipment in their hands is broken. One supplier said his network was crumbling, if there is no replacement or repairs, a hurricane could shut down much of his service area in five counties. If US officials hadn't banned Chinese equipment, the company would have already upgraded to 5G service using Huawei equipment. Now, however, it all has to wait, the Remove and Replace program will only include replacements of like-for-like -like equipment, not upgrades, which is preventing US from growing. That's not the only problem. After they installed replacement equipment, all of their customers' 3G handsets had to use the new network protocol. However, since cell phones and other consumer products are not covered by the Remove and Replace fund, customers will have to pay for these device changes themselves. All in all, additional costs, slow upgrades, and even a possible loss of 911 service in some places, all suggest that the US will pay dearly for Huawei's absence. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.